Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. Making headlines this morning, rescue operations continue after part of an apartment building collapses in Iowa. What investigators are saying this morning about how it happened. Outside with live cam, it is Memorial Day, the day we honor our nation's war dead. We see a few high clouds out there at about 70 degrees, so not exactly a cool start to our Memorial Day, but we'll talk to Mike in a moment. Good morning, everybody. It is Monday. It is May 29th. I'm so happy to be here with you all this Glad morning. Glad you're here as well this morning. It was a relaxing weekend. I saw you were watching some races. I was, yes, uh, watching Formula One and the Indy 500 yesterday, as was Mike Osterhage. We were just chatting about the wild end to the Indy 500. Yes, and I always love all the pomp and circumstances, circumstance, I should say, leading up to uh, the start of the Indy 500 and everything. But uh, yeah, it was great then throughout the afternoon. Really pleasant clouds kept temperatures down. That's going to be the situation again today. If you have outdoor plans today, don't change them, but hmm, I'll explain in a second. Yeah, we do have some clouds starting off this morning and temperatures are in the uh, 60s and 70s. Normal low this time of year now is 70 degrees. We are right there in the ballpark. The humidity is it's not bad, mid 60s on average for dew point temperatures. So it's not as though it uh, pushes back when you step outside, but there's some and we'll have some throughout the day as you would expect for the end of May. There are a couple of uh, showers and thunderstorms as you see way, way out there to the northwest. They are not heading in our direction, but there is some energy that's going to be kind of moving on in here, sort of left over from some of those, and that is going to help to touch off a few more showers and thunderstorms around the area later on this afternoon. Also, as you can see, there's a couple of them there uh, just up around Austin, Round Rock area, a couple of showers. There may be a shower in and around the I-35 corridor this morning. Just very small chance for that, but a slightly better chance, about a 40% shot at seeing some rain later on today. Mold is moderate. Pine grass pigweed are all low. And throughout the rest of today, spotty hit or miss storms are possible. Don't cancel outdoor plans. Just be ready to bop inside real quick. If one of those uh, showers or storms does pop up, could have a brief heavy downpour. But again, most of us aren't going to be seeing rain and below average temperatures. Once again, will that trend continue throughout the rest of the week? Details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Tiff, Mark. Mike, thank you very much. This morning, Texas Attorney General Ken Paxton is suspended from office over allegations of misconduct that include bribery and abuse of office. The Texas House voted overwhelmingly this weekend to impeach the Texas Attorney General. Max Massey joins us live from downtown. Now, Max, was this impeachment surprising? Good morning, guys. Well, Tiff, you and I discussed this really on Saturday before the vote. It was surprising in some ways, but not surprising in others. The final tally, 121 yays, 23 nays. And honestly, guys, the, the big surprising part to me was all of the representatives who came out in the aftermath justifying their decision. So take a look at some of the, some of the video from this weekend's vote. You know, this really has been years in the making, that investigation, starting off before he was even reelected. But just the last few days really seemed like the process happened in a very short time. Now, it came just two days after an investigative committee unveiled the articles of impeachment. Impeachment, if you want to look at the numbers, supported by 60 Republicans, and that includes the speaker, Dade Phelan, and this was really interesting to me, all five of the representatives from Collin County. You might ask, why is Collin County important? Well, that's where the Attorney General, Ken Paxton, and his wife have lived for decades. All 23 votes in opposition of the impeachment came from Republicans. Now, just few Attorney Generals have been as prominent as Ken Paxton. As you probably know, he's made a career of suing both the Obama and Biden administrations. He's also one of Trump's closest allies here in Texas, and along with Lieutenant Governor Dan Patrick, Paxton unsuccessfully sued to challenge the 2020 presidential election results in four states. In fact, the former president, Donald Trump, taking to social media just hours before this impeachment process unfolded on Saturday. And a lot of people are asking this morning, what comes next? Well, after it went through the House and Paxton is currently serving his suspension, now goes to the Senate. In the Senate, you need two thirds of the Texas Senate to permanently remove Ken Paxton from his position. And one of the most interesting parts is his wife, who is a Texas state senator. So guys, we do expect this, uh, this story to continue over the next few weeks. And obviously we're gonna stay on top of it like we have since this investigation unfolded. Tiff, Mark, back to you guys.
Thank you, Max. We're going to have those details on KSAT.com. And now to other new details on a 75-year-old woman who was hit and killed by a vehicle while crossing a south side street. She has now been identified as Maria de Moraida, and the medical examiner says she died of blunt force injuries. San Antonio police say it happened around 9.15 Thursday night in the 1600 block of Pleasanton Road near Boca Avenue and Cliff Avenue. They say the woman and a teenager were crossing the street when someone in a vehicle was headed their direction. Police say the driver didn't see the pair crossing and hit the woman in the road and she died at the scene. The teen was not hurt. Investigators deemed the crash an accident, saying the driver pulled over to help and will not face any charges. Now to that partial apartment building collapse in Davenport, Iowa. Residents say when it happened, it felt like an earthquake. So far, no reports of deaths, but multiple people are unaccounted for. As ABC's Derek Dennis reports, crews were working there through the night, and there are concerns more of the building could come down. Frickin' building just collapsed. This morning, a shocking scene in Davenport, Iowa, the middle of an apartment building collapsing floor by floor just before 5 p.m. Sunday with residents inside. This floor has caved in and there's a subject trapped in apartment 510. Multi-agencies responded with the sole purpose of finding people and um, getting them out of the building. At least six stories of the 80 unit building caved in with some apartments completely destroyed. Fire crews were able to rescue seven individuals on their initial response and escort more than a dozen individuals out as they were self evacuating from the building. Authorities say crews found a natural gas leak and water leaking from the floors as emergency crews arrived. There was a lot of screams, a lot of uh, cries, a lot of people saying help. The entire thing shook. I dropped everything I was doing. When I checked out of, out of my door and down the hall, I saw some apartments had water coming out from under their doors. There was a lot of dust and debris. Neighbors had reported ongoing water damage problems, bricks falling from the facade, and a long list of needed repairs. Apparently, the building owner did have permits to make exterior wall repairs that was under direction of his hired engineer. The collapse reminiscent of a four-story garage that pancaked in New York City in April. One person killed. Maintenance issues blamed for that collapse. The lingering concern in Iowa, the stability of the remaining structure and the search for any trapped, injured or dead in the collapse. I'm hoping they bring my dog out and, and that she'll come back out to me. She's my world. It's currently unclear what caused the collapse. The city says heavier equipment and more advanced rescue crews are being called in to go through the building. Derek Dennis, ABC News, New York. The details of the deal between President Joe Biden and House Speaker Kevin McCarthy are out. The 99-page bill produced from their agreement Sunday would avoid a federal default while limiting government spending. But the two leaders still have to persuade Congress to pass the bill. It includes provisions to fund medical care for veterans, change work requirements for some recipients of government aid, and streamline environmental reviews for energy projects. But some conservatives are concerned that the compromise doesn't cut future deficits enough. And Democrats have been worried about proposed changes to work requirements in programs such as food stamps. Right now, 438, 70 degrees. Up next to why number one Spurs prospect Victor Wembanyama is busy right now with some big goals across the pond. Plus, lots of drama yesterday's Indy 500, including at least one big crash. And a look outside, the tra trans guide. Very smooth, but we know it's going to be a busy Monday. A lot of people are heading back home. They are, so the roads could be busier later on today as people get ready to go back to work tomorrow. And outside with live and yeah, Mike says there might be a shower or storm later on. We'll talk more about those chances and what we could see on our Memorial Day 2023. We'll be back. 441 jam-packed morning sports while most draft picks are enjoying some time off from games doing some training before the summer NBA draft Victor Wimbeyama is busy on some bigger goals across the pond as Metropolitan's 92 defeated Tony Parker's Osvel yesterday one game one of the semifinals of the French LMB Pro A League Wimby scored 19 points which led all players and had 14 rebounds this is the best of five series and game two is tomorrow afternoon 1 30 our time. White will inbound. It's off the smoke for the 
seventh game. At one point, the Miami Heat were one win away from being swept out of the Eastern Conference Finals. And then the former Spurs guard Derek White forced a winner take all game seven with a putback Saturday night in game six. White was right there to win the game for Boston with one a point one left on the clock when the ball left his hands. What a way to win the game. 104 103 game seven is tonight at 730 back in Boston. Winner of the East will take on the Denver Nuggets in Denver's first trip to the NBA Finals. You can see all the action live here on KSAT 12. Game one of the NBA Finals is going to happen Thursday night, 730 in Denver. San Antonio Missions started off the week strong against Amarillo at the Wolf. Missions won the series opening game 14-4. Then on Wednesday, Missions won in the bottom of the ninth. Ripken Reyes delivered a single to right field, driving in the run from third to take the game 4-3, their second walk-off win of the season. San Antonio outscored Amarillo 31-13 in their first four games, winning each one before Saturday's 1-0 loss. Yesterday, Efrain Contreras threw four innings, gave up two runs, and struck out seven for the missions. But those pesky sod poodles scored five runs in the eighth inning and won 9-3 in the series finale. San Antonio is now 23-22 and on the season. Missions now hit the road to take on the Frisco Rough Riders. That series runs Tuesday to Sunday. Missions are second in the Texas League South standings. Frisco is third. The most famous words in motorsports revved up the 107th Indy 500 yesterday and it had no shortage of drama after a runner up finish last year. Pato Award looked prime for a late run. He effectively took the lead with 18 laps to go with fresh tires overtaking 2022 champ Marcus Erickson. Just as he asserts himself, Felix Rosenquist crashes into the wall, spins out, taking Kyle Kirkwood with him. Kirkwood's vehicle flipped over and one of his tires flew off the track, narrowly missing the grandstands. A scary scene, but luckily everyone would be okay. Awards chances of victory took a hit. Uh, race started with eight laps remaining. Award fell behind instantly. Tried to make up ground by passing Joseph Newgarden, but lost control and crashed, bringing out another red flag. Award finishes a disappointing 24th at Indy, but the race was far from over. After yet another controversial red flag, race resumes. Two laps to go. Erickson had the lead looking to become a repeat champ, but Newgarden pieced together a massive run on the final lap, vaulting ahead with a half lap to go. And after years of being bummed out, Newgarden wins his first career. Indianapolis 500 even snuck through the fence to jump up into the fans like the Packers do at Lambeau Field. Uh, quite a fun run there at the Brickyard. That was exciting, but also that crowd, so many people showed out. Yes, for this. Uh, biggest Incredible. day in motor racing. Very cool. All right, time now, 445, 70 degrees outside. Up next, Theranos founder Elizabeth Holmes is now set to report to a minimum security prison in Bryan. Why a lawyer says she is not ready for what's coming. Welcome back, Theranos founder Elizabeth Holmes is scheduled to begin her prison sentence tomorrow in Bryan, Texas for defrauding investors. ABC's Ari Rochev has the details in today's GMA First Look. In this morning's GMA First Look, Elizabeth Holmes' last day of freedom. The Theranos founder set to report to this now infamous minimum security prison in Bryan, Texas to begin serving her 11 plus year sentence after multiple failed last ditch legal efforts. No matter how confident a person may be, or how prepared they are for a prison sentence, no one can be prepared for what Elizabeth Holmes is in for on Tuesday. Holmes claimed her Theranos technology could run hundreds of health tests with just a few drops of blood, but that was a lie. And she was convicted of four counts of fraud and conspiracy in January 2022. Ms. Holmes is going to have a very mundane life. All the details coming up at 7 a.m. With your GMA First Look, I'm Ariel Reshef, ABC News, New York. Outside right now, see how things are looking with Transcad right now. Should hardly be anybody on the roads today due to it being a holiday. And they're looking right now at 35 and 90. Some folks do have to work. A lot of folks are out of town or are taking a day off after 
doing maybe a picnic or barbecue on Sunday. Mm -hmm. Very relaxing weekend for some. And it was fantastic for it. I was doing some yard work and it really wasn't that bad. I mean, we had that cloud cover, kept temperatures down somewhat. That's pretty much going to be the situation again today. Difference being we do have a chance for some rain. If you have outdoor plans, do not change them. Just have that place where you can kind of hide out real quickly if uh, one of those showers and thunderstorms happens to pop up in your neighborhood. Sunrise, this was yesterday in China Grove. It was beautiful. It's pretty much uh, in places what it's going to look like this morning. We do have some clouds still hanging around here this morning, and we are going to keep plenty of clouds around throughout the day. Limited sunshine. And here's the uh, satellite picture. One thing to take note, first of all, going back in uh, in the past 12 hours had a couple of these showers trying to pop up off here to the east and there's still a few up around Austin. There may be one or two along the I-35 corridor this morning. Also, as I pointed out earlier, there's that disturbance out there to the northwest. That's the one that wants to kind of move down in our direction and give us a chance for a couple of showers and thunderstorms. Now, computer models are once again kind of like last week how they were having trouble handling this. They're having a little bit of trouble handling this. This one uh, tries to get a lot going this morning. I'm really not buying into that. Again, there may be one or two of those showers around here this morning, but then this afternoon we get a few of them popping up around here. A couple of showers, a couple of thunderstorms. Again, there's going to be sort of scattershot around the area, but if you get one of these storms, could have a, still a, a, you know, a decent downpour around here, and that will continue on throughout the rest of the afternoon going into this evening. Again, most of us are not going to be seeing any rain around here, but if you do, just be on the lookout for it. Still got a 10, 20% chance for maybe a shower to pop up around here this morning. Temperatures will stay in the low 70s, and then later on this afternoon, we do have, we're going to put a 40% chance for a scattered shower thunderstorm around here, and 84 for a high temperature then later on today and going into this evening then. Uh, maybe a few uh, leftover showers and hanging around here. So as far as the rest of the week, if you like consistency and this trend, you know, even going back a couple of weeks, looking ahead in time, how we were going to be staying at or even slightly below normal. That's the situation this week. Normal high is 90. Now, granted, yes, it will be seasonally hot, but nothing that's just spiking off the charts. Same thing with low temperatures staying really, really consistent around here as we go on in through the, uh, the rest of the week. So that's some good news. Now, as far as any more rain chances, well, after today, pretty much shut things off and then we will see temperatures again getting up into the upper 80s. Yeah, there will be some 90s out there. Another chance of rain is going to move in here by uh, this upcoming weekend. So again, enjoy today. <laughs> A uh, couple of showers, a couple of thunderstorms just sort of scattered about the area. I like that consistency throughout the week. Yeah, and that's been the, the situation or even this you know past weekend inconsistent as far as being on the cool side. No complaints here. Thanks, nope. Mike. Time right now is 453, 70 degrees. Up next is the remake of The Little Mermaid living up to expectation, plus a look at a big winner of the 76 Canes International Film Festival. Disney's Little Mermaid live action remake leads the Memorial Day weekend box office. For the latest on what's happening in Hollywood, here's ABC's Christopher Watson. Disney's The Little Mermaid took moviegoers under the sea for Memorial Day weekend. The live-action remake of the 1989 animated classic earned $95.5 million domestically through Sunday, with estimates that total could reach $118 million by the end of the holiday weekend. You might want to buckle up. Universal's 10th installment of the Fast and Furious franchise, Fast 10, dropped to second place with $23 million for a two-week domestic total of $108 million. The galaxy still needs its guardians. And rounding out the top three, Disney and Marvel's Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3 earned an additional $20 million, bringing its total domestic box office to $299 million. Disney is the parent company of ABC News. <laughs> Director Justine Trier's Anatomy of a Fall won the Palme d'Or over the weekend at the 76 Cannes International Film Festival. It's a... Uh... It's a big, big, big uh, gift for me and, uh, and for my team. The twisty French Alps courtroom drama is about a writer trying to prove her innocence and her husband's death. It's only the third film directed by a woman to win the prestigious top prize at Cannes. And happy birthday to Annette Bening. The Tony, Emmy and Academy Award winning actress is turning 65. And that's what's happening in Hollywood. I'm Christopher Watson, ABC News.
It's now about three minutes until five. With days to spare, President Joe Biden and House Speaker Kevin McCarthy have reached an agreement to raise the nation's debt ceiling. Up next, the compromise is being made and when the plan is set to be finalized. Plus how two Marines are taking the time to remember and care for the families of fallen heroes. And to look outside with Transguy, we have Stephen here to give us the latest coming up. Live from Chase at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. On this Memorial Day, the nation pauses to remember our fallen heroes. Some of them gave the ultimate sacrifice for us, and it's, it's, we must remember them and we must show them honor. The debt ceiling deal that the president and House Speaker agreed to over the weekend is now heading to Congress for a vote with a default deadline looming. I'm ABC's Justin Finch with what's in that deal and what's next. And a look outside with live cam, 70 degrees outside. A lot of people are making plans today and have different events. Mike has your forecast in just a moment. And a good morning to you. It is Memorial Day, Monday, May 29th. Thanks for joining us. If you're getting your cafecito, your tea ready, we're so excited you're here with us. Let's go right to Mike and get an update on the uh, forecast for this holiday. Looking very nice uh, today. We are starting off about where we should be. We are at 71 degrees. The normal low temperature is 70. Dew points at 66, which means... Yeah, there's a fair enough of amount of humidity out there, but not just outrageously humid, not much of a breeze. We do have plenty of clouds. 84 for a high temperature today. That's it. Six degrees below normal. So this is just fantastic today. Now, we do have a chance for a couple of showers. We'll talk about that in a minute. The aquifer yesterday went up one tenth of a foot, and the allergens mold finally came back down because, of course, it was sky high last week, 790, and just little bits of grass pine as well as pigweed. So there have been a couple of showers that have tried to pop up overnight. There were a few up there around Austin, and even a couple of more just around Austin. There may be one or two of them long. Uh, 35 as the the morning rolls on, but also there's this batch of rain out there to the northwest. So there is a disturbance kind of sitting out here and this is going to hang around. I guess the best way to put it. And so we will see a few showers and a couple of thunderstorms popping up around here. 40% chance for uh, some showers, which means most of us aren't going to be seeing any rain today. Now, if you do get one of these thunderstorms to pop up, it can produce a couple of brief heavy downpours, but if you have outdoor plans like uh, being over the grill today, uh, 84, like I said, for a high temperature, we will have a couple of uh, thunderstorms out there, but I would not change any outdoor plans at all. Just have the sliding door. Oh, well, don't leave it open because flies will get in, but uh, have the sliding door ready to be opened up if you need to uh, pop inside very quickly with any of these showers that do pop up. But again, don't change outdoor plans today. Just kind of keep a lookout. Best thing to do, keep the app handy. If anything pops up, you will uh, know about it. All the details for the rest of the short work week coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Stephen Cavazos. Good morning, sir. Anything going on? I well, doubt. Uh, you know, I'm hungry now, Mike, after looking at that graphic. But uh, thankfully, things are pretty much in the clear. Let's get a look at Transguide right now. Uh, a quick look around town does show I-37 at 410. Things are moving along just fine. 10 events, Jackson, very quiet morning, and that's really what we expect as a lot of folks may have the day off today, but we know some of you do have to head to work. So really what you're going to see out there are quiet roadways, and we're hoping that it will stay that way for the rest of the uh, morning commute. But to get a look here at the map, what we really see a lot of is still some of the active construction. And right now that will be the main headline on the roadways, although a lot of us really don't have to travel this early in the morning for work. Construction crews are still out there working to improve the roadway, so let's make sure we give them plenty of room and obviously move over our slowdown. Let's get a look at travel times, because if you are waking up this early in the morning, and plans to head to San Antonio. I-10 eastbound from Bernie looks pretty good right now. 25 minutes is what you can expect along those lanes. We're seeing a little bit of a delay along 281 southbound heading in from Bulverde, but remember there is still plenty of the asphalt work that is taking place out there. More on that a little bit later on, but about 26 minutes along I-35 southbound if you are traveling in from New Braunfels this early in the morning. Let's get it back here on Transguy. There's 1604 at Shane Field. Uh, morning commute, yeah, expected to be pretty quiet today, but we'll watch things very closely, and again, if anything does pop up, we'll be sure to let you know. Mark Tiffany. Thank you, Stephen. New this morning, Bear County Sheriff's officials say one person is dead following a wrong way crash overnight in West Bear County. It happened around 1 a.m. on Highway 90 West, just past 211. That's outside 1604. A sergeant says the driver of a small car collided head on with a pickup driving the wrong way. 
The driver of the pickup and two passengers were taken to the hospital with minor injuries. BCSO says the driver of the car was taken to a hospital but later died. There are new developments in the case of an active Amber Alert. A 29 year old man wanted in connection with the disappearance of two little girls has been arrested, but SAPD is still looking for the children. Julio Nahar Trevino was arrested Saturday and charged with interference with child custody. According to an arrest affidavit, police say he was informed by Child Protective Services. A court order had been issued and the agency was removing the children from the home. They say he then left with the kids, prompting the Amber Alert. Despite being in custody, court documents say he is refusing to tell law enforcement where the children and their mother are. DPS says 26 year old Kadia Fox is wanted in connection with the abduction. Nahar Trevino's bond is set at $10,000. Anyone with information about the abduction is asked to contact the San Antonio Police Department. Two motorcyclists are spending the entire month taking the time to remember and care for the families of fallen heroes. The two Marines come from multi-generational military families, and now they're going across the country hoping more people will join them in honoring veterans and first responder families. Averaging 400 miles a day, two Marines, Dan Halpern and Bob Galt, are riding their motorcycles to each of the four corners of the country, urging people to donate and help the nonprofit Tunnel to Tower build custom homes for severely injured veterans and first responders. Well, we'd ask them to consider, you know, their own their own families and situations, and look at all the support they've gotten from their community officers, their firefighters, the ambulance folks. I mean, they put their lives on the line every day for us, right? Whether it's the veterans or first responders, and anything we can do to assist that community, it's worthwhile cause. The motorists are in El Paso today. We have a link to follow their ride and donate to their campaign on KSAT.com. And City Hall and most municipal offices will be closed today for Memorial Day. Public safety and emergency services will remain in operation. We have a complete list of what's open and closed today on our website. Just head to KSAT.com and look for this story on the homepage. Right now, 5.07 and now to Washington and that 11th hour debt limit deal. President Biden and House Speaker McCarthy now urging Congress to push through their agreement to raise the debt ceiling. The president says the compromise takes catastrophic default off the table. However, as ABC's Justin Finch explains, lawmakers from both parties are accusing their sides of making too many concessions. This morning with the Treasury Secretary warning the nation could be seven days away from defaulting on its debt. A new lap in the race to raise the debt ceiling is underway. The Speaker and I made it clear from the start that the only way forward was a bipartisan agreement. President Joe Biden urging Congress to pass the debt limit deal he brokered with House Speaker Kevin McCarthy. Both leaders forced to make concessions. It doesn't get everything everybody wanted, but that's in divided government. That's where we end up. The compromise would increase the country's $31 trillion debt ceiling through the 2024 presidential election and lock in new spending restraints. Sources tell ABC News the budget deal keeps most federal spending roughly flat next year, raising it by 1% in 2025. Defense spending would increase. The agreement includes new work requirements with time limits on how long some Americans up to age 54 can receive food assistance. Sources say the bill would also preserve Social Security, Medicaid and veterans benefits. Congress members are reacting to the 99-page legislation released Sunday. Staunch conservatives like Virginia Republican Bob Good believe McCarthy gave up too much, writing no one claiming to be a conservative could justify a yes vote. David Congressional Progressive Caucus Chair Pramila Jayapal on CNN. And, and I think it is uh, really unfortunate that the president opened the door to this. Meantime, many Americans who rely on federal assistance like this West Virginia single mom worry Capitol Hill delays will cost her family. There are other bills that either are going to go unpaid um, or we're not going to eat. Congress members are due back to Capitol Hill beginning tomorrow from their holiday recess with the House on track for a debt ceiling vote Wednesday and the Senate already bracing for potential votes Friday and into the weekend. Justin Finch, ABC News, Washington. Time now, 509, 70 degrees outside.
Just ahead, when Apple's free MyPhoto stream service that uploads the last 30 days of images to the cloud is shutting down. Up next, watch as a fifth generation descendant of Sam Houston is promoted to sergeant by a fifth generation descendant of Davy Crockett here in San Antonio. Wow, couldn't have happened at a better place for that promotion ceremony. Unbelievable. And outside with live cam right now, yeah, there's some cars on the road out there by the airport, and we'll get you updated on our rain chances today. There are a few storms in the Memorial Day forecast. We'll be back. 513 as we continue honoring heroes promotion ceremony for Marine has major roots in our local history. This past weekend, a fifth generation descendant of Sam Houston was promoted to sergeant by a fifth generation descendant of Davy Crockett. This took place outside the Alamo. Their names are Major Jake Crockett and now Sergeant Chase Houston. It is tradition for Marines to choose the site where they'll be promoted and for Sergeant Houston, it was an obvious choice to honor his family lineage. Now the sergeant's mentor reached out to ask who the commanding officer for recruiting was for San Antonio and much to everyone's surprise learned it was Major Crockett. It's a big deal to me, absolutely an honor and a privilege um, to be able to do this today. I was in awe that, that this whole, um, it, everything was taking place. Originally from Tyler, Texas, Sergeant Houston says he frequently visited San Antonio and says he's grateful for being part of this event. Congratulations on your promotion. Very special. Right now, 514, 70 degrees. Up next, a first look at Meta's next VR headset, the Quest 3. Plus, why a lawyer that used ChatGPT now has to answer for its bogus citations. Ghirardelli Intense Dark. Old. Rich. Intensely delicious dark chocolate. Ghirardelli Intense Dark. Makes life a bite better. With Allegra, allergies don't hold us back. Allegra starts working two times faster than Claritin. And unlike Zyrtec, it won't make us drowsy. Allegra gives you the fastest, non-drowsy, 24-hour allergy relief so you can live your greatness. It's Macy's Memorial Day sale. With an extra 20% off everything you need to celebrate with your crew and kick off the summer in style. Plus, Macy's Star Rewards members earn even faster Dream Star Money bonus days. Going on now. In today's Tech Bytes, Meta's new VR headset adds some color. According to Bloomberg, the Quest 3's prototype includes two color video pass-through cameras and a depth sensor. A New York lawyer reportedly used ChatGPT to prepare for a lawsuit, and it backfired. The New York Times says Stephen Schwartz submitted a brief that was filled with bogus citations, totally made-up cases. Schwartz told the judge he was unaware the chatbot's content could be false. Finally, Apple is shutting down My Photo Stream. The service will stop uploading photos to Apple. Apple servers on June 26th, then officially shut down a month later. Apple says you won't lose any photos or videos because they're all stored on at least one of your devices, but they recommend customers use the iCloud to store pictures across multiple devices. I'm surprised the iCloud is still afloat. After all, it's always sinking. Those are your tech bites. Have a great day. Just about 519. How are we looking out there for Memorial Day morning? Quiet. You know, I think that's what we all expected. A lot of folks may have the day off, which is great, but uh, some of us have to head to work. So let's get a look at what you can expect this early in the morning. Uh, again, uh, really quiet roadways. That's pretty much stayed that way for the last hour or two here on Transguide. Of course, earlier overnight, there were some pretty serious crashes, which we mentioned earlier, but uh, I've not seen anything significant pop up here on any of these shots. Uh, 1604 Chainfield. Enjoy the morning commute today because we're not seeing a lot of it. But let's take a look at the map. Uh, what we mentioned is, of course, that there will still be some of the active construction. But if you have folks that have any plans to travel home or if you have any plans on hitting the road today for whatever reason, uh, let's take a look at some of the gas prices. Because according to, today, according to AAA, as of today, the average gas price in Bear County looks to be about $3.11. Around the state, we see about $3.12. And the country, we're looking at $3.58. So according to AAA, uh, we actually expected to see these gas prices go up due to the demand. But 
uh, we're hoping to see that kind of fall. Uh, those numbers fall just a bit uh, as obviously folks are getting uh, their morning commute rolling here. But one last look here at 10 at Ralph Fair. Things have been quiet, Mike. Uh, not seen anything else other than just some quiet roadways. Yeah, that's probably going to be the case all day long. So uh, what to expect uh, throughout the rest of the day? Well, spotty hit or miss showers and storms are possible today. If you have outdoor plans, do not change them, but just be ready to sort of have, like this says here, a plan B and also below average temperatures. Yesterday was very, very comfortable. We stayed in the mid 80s. That's going to be the situation again today. Backyard, beautiful morning. That was uh, over the weekend, 410 there at Rigsby. What a gorgeous, gorgeous view. Thank you very much for the KSAT Connect picture. All right, there's a 10% chance to see a stray little sprinkle around here. There's a couple of computer models that are trying to get one to, to pop up around right along the I-35 corridor uh, later on this morning. There's a couple of them up by Austin. So if something decides to drift a little further down to the south now by noon, uh, that's going to start to come up a little bit. We'll have some sunshine, limited sunshine, kind of like yesterday throughout the day. And then we do have that chance for a couple of showers, a couple of thunderstorms around here. Again, most everybody's not going to be seeing rain 84 high temperature. The normal average high temperature is 90. We'll take that anytime. All right, here is a different computer model than what I showed last half hour. And again, it's got one or two little showers trying to pop up here this morning. Then we go into the afternoon. This one is not necessarily as aggressive with any rain, although if you do get one of the two of these showers with thunderstorms, it could have a decent heavy downpour. But again, these are not going to be widespread at all, just sort of the, the scattered variety. And then they will begin to sort of die down a little bit, obviously, once we get into the evening hours. The reason for all of this, and this is looking at the water vapor imagery, sort of the, uh, uh, I, I kind of look at it as like an x-ray of the atmosphere, if you will, because you can see some of that, that water vapor aloft in the atmosphere. If you watch the circulation here, watch the loop, you can almost see a little bit of a load developing out here and working its way across the area. That's what's going to be just kind of hanging around here, providing enough lift to give us that chance for those uh, couple of showers and thunderstorms as the afternoon rolls on. And then that's going to scooch on out of here and just leave behind partly cloudy skies throughout the rest of the week. So we've got that 40% chance for a couple of uh, shower storms today, 84 degrees, 85 tomorrow with a bit more in the way of sunshine. And then we're going to be up to 89 the rest of the week. Another chance of rain comes in here on Saturday and Sunday. Those high temperatures, nothing on this graphic is at the normal high of 90, which is normal today, and then 70 is the normal low temperature. So a little bit of humidity that's going to be hanging around here this week, keeping those uh, low temperatures up ever so slightly. But this is not bad at all. I mean, a nice Memorial Day, despite the fact, you know, a couple of showers here and there. But for the rest of the week, this is just absolutely fantastic. Yeah, below normal across the board in the afternoons. That is mm -hmm. a bit unusual. And even long, long range, mm -hmm. you know, keep looking at that Climate Prediction Center, still has the odds of staying slightly at or slightly below normal. Granted, still low 90s this time of year, but that's not bad at all. Not bad. Thanks, Mike. Thank you, Mike. 523, 70 degrees. Up next, a look at the first clip from the upcoming Pixar film Elemental and new Ariel Haley Bailey talks about diving into those classic songs. 526 animators have long said that two of the toughest things to animate are fire and water. You can judge for yourself how the artist behind an upcoming animated adventure managed it. CNN's David Daniel has that and more in your Hollywood Minute. Whoa, how'd you do that? It's the minerals. Check this out. <laughs> awesome! Pixar has released the first clip from Elemental. Fire and water meet and are transformed in the animated adventure as Ember and Wade try to make their unlikely relationship work. Elemental opens in theaters June 16th. I want to be where the people are. Halle Bailey, who stars as Ariel in The Little Mermaid, says she loved diving into the classic music and getting the stamp of approval from the original Ariel, Jodie Benson. That's so validating to the little girl within me because the work that she did is iconic. It's the soundtrack to all of our lives. So as a musician and singer, I felt like I was respecting what was already there, but also breathing sort of like this new perspective and new life into the original songs that we all know and love. 
In Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. 527, 70 degrees. Two new bills could soon help if a complaint is filed at a county elections office in Texas. Up next, why Harris County officials think the legislation is targeting them specifically. Plus, what's next for a woman now charged with driving under the influence after plowing her vehicle into a canal and almost hitting a child. Making headlines this morning, Memorial Day weekend has been marked by tragedy instead of celebration for many this year. Just ahead, a string of shootings that has rocked communities across the U.S. And outside with live camp, 70 degrees outside. We might see some showers across the city. Mike has your forecast. And good morning to you. It's Monday, May 29th, Memorial Day. Thanks for joining us. You know, it's warmer these days, so we're talking about yeah. food during the break, <laughs> but I'd love like a ceviche during oh, the Oh, that Ooh. sounds so yes. good. Like, yeah. like the yes. warm weather brings we're a in ceviche that in my house. Now, aren't we? Oh, that's good. <laughs> yes. oh. Have you ever taken uh, watermelon, drizzle a little bit of balsamic vinegar on it? Mmm. Uh -huh. Now we're talking. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Somebody run and get some food. <laughs> anyway, uh, yeah, today is going to be, if you want to do a little bit of grilling, good day for it with the one exception. We'll talk about that or maybe a couple of exceptions that more on that in a moment. Is that my imagination? We're not seeing the glow yet. No, we can't. Well, it's still an hour plus until sunrise. I don't think so yet, but uh, anyway, it uh, we've got some clouds hanging around here. 71 degrees, dew points at 66. Normal low is 70, right where we should be. 66 for a dew point. That's not bad when you uh, consider we've had higher humidity around here, and the humidity actually yesterday wasn't really bad in the afternoon. Here's the uh, satellite and radar loop over the past 12 hours. A couple of showers had popped up here along 35. You can see a few of them up there around Austin, so just to take those into account, maybe kind of drifting a little bit further down to the south. And then we've got these out here to the northwest, and there is a low out here which is going to kind of continue to spin and some of these are going to start to work their way uh, and that's going to help to develop work their way in our direction also help to uh, develop a couple of more with this upper low which is just a kind of a weak upper low but this feature which is sliding across the area again dew point temperatures well a little bit higher there Stinson as well as Randolph 66 8 or excuse me 68 and 69 respectively same thing in Hondo mold moderate pine grass pigweed are all on the low side so mostly cloudy a stray shot there's those couple up there around Austin again. One or two may try and drift their way a little bit further down to the south. It's just something to kind of keep in mind pretty much along the I-35 corridor. Then later on today, a few scattered showers and a few thunderstorms around the area. Most of us will not see rain, but if you do, could be a decent downpour. Mid 80s, so temperatures once again are going to be held well below normal. Partly cloudy this week. We are going to be warming up back up to just about normal temperatures in the upper 80s, what you would expect this time of year, and a fair amount of humidity out there. And then the upcoming weekend, upper 80s, and another chance for a couple of showers and a couple of storms. We will get the forecast all sorted out in detail in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority. Can you count the number of cars on one hand, I assume? Uh, I could tell you right now, Mike, there are probably yeah, zero incidents. We'll start there. Not seeing anything reported by Trans Guide just yet, but let's get a quick look around town. 35 at Zazamora. Yeah, things have been moving along just fine. I mean, that's what we expect. A lot of folks are off today, so that's great. But if you have to head out and hit the roads in the next few minutes or so, you are in luck. It does feel like a holiday out there because there's really nothing going on. 1604 at Medio Creek. Uh, check out those east and westbound lanes. Perfect opportunity to get some tranquility out out on the roadways. It's rare that we say that, but let's get you to the map. And of course, you're going to see a lot of green out there and still plenty of that active construction. None of it, though, seems to be causing an impact with traffic, at least just yet. But we're going to keep a very close eye on the map as well as these cameras. Let's take a look at travel times. If you're hitting the roads right now, heading in from Seguin, it's still on the green along I-10 westbound. About 30 minutes is what you can expect to the downtown area. It's a usual drive time along 87 northbound heading in from Lavernia. We're seeing about 33 minutes at this hour. And for our friends down in Floresville, probably about a 30 minute drive for you at this point. But let's get it back here. It's been a very quiet morning out on the roadways uh, at this hour 10 at Vance Jackson. We have maybe uh, three folk folks out there. Uh, seen a little bit more traffic there at 10 at Fresno, but we'll watch the roads closely. And as always, if you're hitting the roads, make sure to do the same. Mark. Thank you, Stephen. Natalie, breaking news on the city's south side. Police are on the scene of a shooting that ended with one man in the hospital. Max Massey joins us live. And Max, what can you tell us? 
Good morning, guys. So we're told that man woke up with a gunshot wound to his left arm. We're told it is non-life-threatening injuries. In fact, he's already been transported to the hospital. I'm going to step out of the way, show you what we're looking at right now. The investigation is underway. About four police units here on the scene. We had five originally. They just sped off. Now, take a look in the distance. We're told gunfire came out earlier this morning. Like I said, one man in his 50s hit in the left arm, non-life-threatening. Two homes here on West Hart were hit. About four to five people in each home. I did talk to police. They say there were families inside. They're being cooperative. No children inside either of the homes that was shot at. In terms of how many gunshots, right now we're only able to see two evidence markers on the ground. Usually that indicates only two gunshots. Obviously, investigators still on the scene trying to figure out why exactly this happened, who was responsible. So guys, as that investigation unfolds, I was talking to police and I asked them, is this an area that they come to a lot? Is there any reason why this would be on the radar? They said that these homes, this street in particular, not on the radar. So they're particularly interested why this happened and who exactly pulled the trigger. But as of right now, no suspects in custody. Tiffany, Mark, back to you guys. Max, thank you. Memorial Day, a time to honor those who have died serving the United States in America's military. It also marks an unofficial start to summer with lazy backyard barbecues and other festivities. But for many, as CNN's Reed Bignon reports, this Memorial Day weekend has been marked by tragedy instead of celebration as a string of shootings rocked communities across the nation. These gangbangers who are lawless, uh, and what they are, are gangbangers. Officials say at least three people were killed and multiple others injured in a shooting at a motorcycle rally in Red River, New Mexico, Saturday. According to police, it started with a confrontation between motorcycle gangs. The mayor of Red River said everyone involved is in police custody. Police say Jacob David Castillo, who was injured and hospitalized, was charged with an open count of murder. Meanwhile, police in the Seattle area searching for a suspect after a Saturday shooting at a casino. Three people were hospitalized and are in critical condition. On the other side of the country, five people were shot Friday in Baltimore. Police say it began with an argument. With officers less than 50 or 60 feet away, there was officer that had been here all day. It says a lot about that person who is willing to do that. All the injuries are believed to be non-life threatening. Police are still looking for the suspect. A suspect also still at large in nearby Washington, D.C. after a man was killed in a shooting at the Metro's Navy Yard station Sunday morning. That shooting started with an argument on the train. And in Atlanta, two teens were shot Sunday morning outside a high school. One 16-year-old victim was killed. The other hospitalized in stable condition. No arrests have been made, and police did not say what led to the shooting. I'm Reed Binion reporting. The Texas legislature passed two bills Sunday that some say target election meddling in the state's largest county. The legislation authorizes the state secretary of state to order administrative oversight of county elections office if a complaint is filed. The measure would affect any county that has a population of more than 4 million people. Only one county, Harris, currently meets that criteria over in Houston. Leaders say the move is meant to provide voters with confidence in their elections. Harris County experienced election problems last year that caused the county's former elections administrator to resign. The bills now head to Governor Abbott's desk for his signature. Democrats say if the bills become law, they plan on challenging them in court. Pope Francis has returned to work after taking a day off due to fever. That is according to the daily appointment schedule sent by the Vatican. The Pope canceled all of his meetings on Friday morning because of his illness. The 86-year-old pontiff has had a recent history of medical issues, including spending a couple of days in the hospital in March for bronchitis. Nepal's government honored record-holding climbers today during celebrations of the first ascent of Mount Everest from 70 years ago. Hundreds attended a rally in Kathmandu to mark the anniversary. Among those honored was a Sherpa guide who climbed the world's highest mountain twice this season for a record 28 times overall. Edmund Hillary and Tenzing Norgay initially reached the summit back on May 29, 1953. Nepal began celebrating the anniversary as Everest Day after Hillary's death back in 2008. Time now, 539, 69 degrees outside. Up next, charges a woman now faces after police say she plowed her vehicle into a cow, canal rather, and almost hit a kid. And outside with live cam. Very nice start to this Monday morning, 69 degrees. There are some changes coming up. Mike will tell you about them. 
Right now, 542, a drive on a central Florida beach ends with a woman under arrest. As ABC's Jacqueline Lee explains, investigators say she had too much to drink before winding up in the drink over the weekend near Daytona. A reckless driver on Smyrna Dunes. A woman is charged with driving her vehicle up to 50 miles per hour on a Volusia County, Florida beach packed with holiday revelers, allegedly while under the influence. Police say she allegedly plowed her car into the water after almost hitting a child. They kind of stopped us and they said that we almost hit a child. I didn't think that we did. In the moments after, body camera footage shows deputies interviewing 26-year-old Sarah Ramsamy of Orlando, who appears to admit she was behind the wheel. We were just so trying to turn around. We didn't think that we could do a U-turn around here. So we were just Going. Authorities say Ram Sammy sped down the dog friendly beach in close proximity to families, their children, and pets. Vehicles are allowed on some parts of the beach. And why am I going to jail? Right now, I think you're driving under the influence. Okay. She was taken into custody, and officials say she had a blood alcohol level of 0.153. The suspect is out on bond. She's facing multiple charges, including DUI and reckless driving. Jacqueline Lee, ABC News, New York. 544, 69 degrees. Up next, why a major insurance carrier has new homeowners scrambling after a new company policy goes into effect. And check in Transguide as we go to break. 35 at 90, no problems. 35 at New Braunfels, same. Steven's here. We'll talk to him coming up a little bit later in the news. Welcome back in your morning consumer headlines. People who live in California will no longer be able to purchase a new home insurance policy from State Farm. The insurance provider stopped accepting home insurance applications as of Saturday. State Farm says risk of wildfires, construction costs are going up, and a challenging reinsurance market are all reasons for the decision. Existing policyholders will not be affected by the shift. A Kentucky man who ran out of gas and stopped to fuel up left the gas station winning a million dollars. Michael Schlimmer barely coasted into the station when his car was low on gas. He had 40 bucks on him, so he spent 20 on gas and a single $20 lottery ticket. Turns out that ticket was a winner. He says after taxes, he received a check for more than $600,000. He says he plans to buy a new car and save the rest. That's amazing. Right? A new car, that sounds great, and mm -hmm. saving, that's awesome. Maybe something with a bigger gas tank. <laughs> Yeah, well, we were just talking about those gas prices earlier. Obviously, we expected the gas prices to go up a little bit with the demand increase, but uh, obviously things are pretty cool right now on the roadways. We're not really seeing a whole lot out there. It's been very quiet, and that's what we expect. Uh, obviously, Memorial Day has brought us some quiet roadways, and we're very thankful for that. Not seeing any major issues reported out here on our map, so you can see a lot of it is just going to be some of the scattered construction. And if you don't have to commute today, regardless, plan your commute ahead of time. We actually have some work taking place here off of Loop 345 or Frederick Road. This is near the Crossroads area pavement work. Now this starts tonight around 8 in the evening and should wrap around 5 in the morning, but this is work's going to take us all the way up until Tuesday, June 6. What we're going to see out there are alternating lane closures in both directions. That is actually between I-10 to Loop 410. So just plan your commute ahead of time. Um, obviously, crews are out there working to improve our roadways, and uh, the roadways have been looking pretty quiet, and so it feels like a vacation for me. I might as well have taken the day off. But you're here. You know so what? Can we yeah. get you to stick around at least a little while? You know, I was out sick last week yes, and I, I was uh, so I was happy to come back today. And good. I was like, you know what? Good to come back with some quiet roadways. Yes. So yeah. I'm not going to complain. A light duty that. day, right? A light duty day. Yeah. And it's a quiet newsroom this morning, too. Yeah. I was going to say, we'll have the yeah. newsroom all to ourselves. <laughs> it's usually quiet in the morning. Yes, so it is. yesterday, a great day, had a lot of clouds here. A beautiful ending to a, as Oscar says, a super fun day. And today's going to be a, uh, a nice day as well. We do have a chance for some rain today however we'll talk more about that in a second we've got uh cloudy skies and i was thinking that was a star for a second nope that's an airplane over there um sunrise should be okay still like i said fair amount of clouds hanging around here yesterday's high temperatures oh only one i was going to say what don't you see on the map college station did hit 90 89 in houston otherwise look at that low to mid 80s around here and forecast high temperatures today 
Yeah, not seeing any 90s on the map, which, you know, you think back to last year and in previous years where it can be just screeching hot on Memorial Day. And this is not bad at all. 84 for a high temperature later on this afternoon. We have a 10% chance for there are a couple of showers showing up. I'm going to show you this in a second up around Austin right now. And one or two of those may drift a little bit further to the south. So that's just taking into account those few little uh, sprinkly showers up there. And then later on this afternoon, is when we start to see the rain chances move into the area. It is not going to be raining everywhere. It is most of us won't see rain, um, but if you do, you could get a decent downpour around here. So here's what's going on. First of all, here's these couple little uh, showers up I-35 in and around Austin. One or two could drift a little further to the south. Then we're watching this batch of rain out there to the northwest. There is a low out here, which is going to work its way across the area, and that's going to throw some of these showers down in our direction. Now, this computer model does have a couple of these showers showing up this morning, and it's not really as bullish with the rain, but there will be a couple of them out there, a couple of showers, a couple of thunderstorms. Again, very few and far between, so most everybody will not see anything. So don't cancel any outdoor plans, but just uh, have a plan B handy. We've been talking, and this has been the case for the past, what, month, couple of months, always looking ahead that we have below normal temperatures and in okay chance of rain or at least better than average odds. This week, average high temperature right now is at 90. Nothing on this graphic that says 90 degrees for a high temperature here in town. Close to it, obviously. Your backyard may hit 90 if it's 89 out there at the airport. But what's going on? I mean, look at how straight, basically straight across these graphics are, both the high and the low, which is fantastic news. We don't have anything too extreme on either ends of the scale. This time of year, you don't want to see things extreme on the uh, top end of the scale, if you will. But yeah, these temperatures stay close to normal as we get in toward the rest of the week. We're going to be well below it today and still tomorrow, about five degrees below normal. Then 89 all the way through the rest of the week, a mixture of sunshine and clouds. And then another chance of rain moves in here Saturday and as well as on Sunday. And right now it's like perfect time to drink your coffee outside because it's a nice 69 degrees outside. Yeah, it is. I mean, there's some humidity out there, but not too awfully bad. All right. Thanks, Mike. Time now, 552, 69 degrees. Arnold Schwarzenegger has starred in some of the biggest action movies, but he's never done a TV series until now. We get a first look at it next. Good morning. Coming up, we're following the latest on the breaking news overnight and the urgent search for the missing after part of a six-story apartment building collapsed in Iowa. We're live on the scene. Plus, millions of Americans are hitting the skies and roads for the Memorial Day holiday. We have your travel forecast and the best time to head home. And Shark Tank's Mark Cuban is here live answering your small business questions. Plus, where you can find the best deals this Memorial Day. That's coming up right here on GMA. Malone. What was the plan? To kill all of you and then to leave. And now, with all our guns out, I'll manage. You're the fastest 65 year old white guy on the planet. Arnold Schwarzenegger is a retiring CIA operative in the Netflix action series Fubar. Now, since I'm retired, I'm going to leave my wife back. What's going to stop us? 15 year old divorce baby? She doesn't love you anymore? Or finding out their daughter is also an operative. The series marks Schwarzenegger's television series debut. It's a much bigger challenge. No two ways about that. But it was fun because it was uh, a story based on my, one of my favorite movies that I've done, True Lies. And so the idea of combining uh, so much action with also so much comic relief, I was really fantastic. You should end the marriage before you... Do you think I'm a virgin? Well, let me think what I want to think. Oh my God, I'm 28. We had a really fun time. We give each other a hard time a lot, which helped the, I think, father-daughter dynamic. We'd met a couple years prior, and by the time we were finally getting to shoot this, um, we just knew each other pretty well and could, like, tease each other and play and have fun and um, keeping pretty much everything to the script, but still just like having a really good time with it. That was her by a lean arm. What? In Hollywood, I'm Rick Damagella. 
That's so funny you mentioned True Lies. I was thinking that the whole time watching those initial clips there in that story. Right now, it is exactly 5.58, and we are looking at Trans Guide as we go to break on your Memorial Day 2023.